Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compounds part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 and part 2. Now I'll explain why carbon forms a covalent bond, right? As I told that, since it has 4 in the outermost shell, it can gain 4 electrons and gain, can become C4 minus ion, but this will be difficult, right? The reason why I gave is nobody will give him 4, but actually this is not the case, that's just a way to understand it, but it will be difficult for this guy to hold 10 electrons. See, this guy, if you see carbon, the atomic number is 6, correct? That means there are 6 photons, 6 positive photons. This guy can't hold 10 electrons, right? Because if you it, it already has six electrons, right? So if you see a, a configuration of carbon, carbon has six electrons, six protons, and six neutrons. So ignore this electrons now, neutrons now. Six electrons, six protons. So this guy is having six electrons, six protons. So this the nuclei will have six protons and six neutrons. So this guy proton will not have enough charge to hold ten electrons. This guy can hold six electrons. Right, by default it has 6 electrons like this, I think 2 here and 4 here in the next shell, right, but at the max it can hold 7 or 8 because there are 6 protons, this proton should be sufficiently charged, right, to hold because it's all about the positive and negative charge that holds the electrons, right. We will study more of this in the class 11 when we study the structure of electrons. A structure of atoms where we have this photons and how this electrons are bind towards it and all this shells and all we will study more in detail in the next class but just understand all this 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 guy has only six uh, proton right this guy can't hold 10 electrons because there's a limit to it it has some six photon charge this guy can at the max take seven or eight electrons it can't take right and that's why the the option to take four extra electrons is gone. Correct. The other option is to give four electrons because if it gives four electrons, it has only two electrons and then it will become stable. But it won't be able to lose four electrons because if you take out some electron from here, that needs lots of energy, right? And to take out four electrons from this, it will require huge energy, right? And that is very difficult, very difficult. So in that case, the option of losing four electrons is also gone, right? So it can neither take electrons, four electrons, it can neither give electrons. So it has no other way than to share, correct? Because see, in case of sodium, sodium can easily give an electron because it has only one extra electrons in the shell and it can easily give. Chlorine can take one electron easily because it has only one electron deficiency, it can take that. Also the chlorine uh, nuclei can manage with one extra electron. Sodium guy will also manage with one deficient electron, right? But in case of carbon, extra four electron, this guy itself, the nuclei won't be able to hold four extra electrons. And removing four electron is also not possible because removing four electrons will need huge energy. Correct. And thus, carbon will overcome this problem by sharing its valence electron. Right. And this sharing is the result of, I mean, this covalent bond is nothing but the result of this sharing. And please note, carbon is not the only element which, uh, which, uh, uh, which shows the covalence bond. There are other element also which creates uh, or which uh, which creates molecules uh, using this covalent bond but the carbon covalent bond is the strongest covalent bond so we'll now study some properties of covalent bond the first is the physical state they are generally please note generally liquid or gas some of them may exist as solid because the covalent bond is not as strong as my ionic bond they are generally insoluble in water please note they are insoluble in water as other polar covalent bonds, but soluble in benzene. Why? Why I tell you? 
see they are insoluble in water and other polar solvent uh, polar so solvents because water is a polar solvent as i told if you take water molecule h2o if you see this polar uh, thing here and there is a polar bond but oxygen is slightly negative why because oxygen is has more hunger for electron and it will uh, make sure that electrons spend more time with the oxygen so oxygen becomes slightly negative and hydrogens will become slight positive right so in these kind of uh, solvent the polar solvent if you put something like nacl because nacl is more stable with na plus and cl minus because they are stable right so nacl will have na plus ions and cl minus both are separate actually so let me draw like this na plus and cl minus ion right so na plus ion will be attracted towards oxygen and cl minus will be attracted towards this hydrogen positive and thus you see and that's the reason why uh, this common salt is nacl dissolves in water because water is a polar solvent right it has poles but since if you talk about the carbon compound the covalent compound that i'm talking about the normal covalent compounds not the polar one the polar, uh, polar covalent compounds they don't have any uh, desire to mix with water because water has a positive negative charge but this polar covalent the polar compound the covalent compounds they don't have any charge right so they are neutral and they are not attracted by these charge but if you see sodium chloride that has positive negative charge since there is a charge here so they are attracted towards the oxygen hydrogen part of the water and thus they mix but in this case they are not attracted but this gives the soluble in organic solvents like benzene and chloride they generally have low melting and uh, boiling point again because the covalent bond is weaker than the uh, my ionic bond so they have low melting and boiling points electrical conductivity they generally don't i'll say they generally don't conduct right they generally don't conduct electricity now i talked about carbon i talked about the carbon compound i talked about the covalent bond now i have carbon I have something which has carbon. I have to test whether it has carbon or not because I am talking about carbon, right? I should know a test to find whether a particular object I am talking about, for example, plastic or some cloth or petrol, wood, it has carbon or not. A very simple test is burn it. Burn the material in presence of air, right? So if you burn it, if it gives carbon dioxide gas, it has carbon. Very simple test. You have anything, you just burn it. If it gives carbon dioxide gas, it has carbon. Else it don't have. So you can take paper, you burn it, you get carbon dioxide gas. You take uh, plastic, you burn it, you get carbon dioxide gas. And now, how to test carbon dioxide I, gas? I think we have done this. So if you pass this gas over lime water, right, that guy will turn milky. This kind of uh, thing we have learned in the past uh, chapter where we have to test the presence of carbon dioxide. So we just pass the gas in the line water, it turns milky. So that's how you test the presence of carbon. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.